Hey, thanks so much for downloading the episode on the show today. We talk a little bit about our own show. Do we listen? Do we criticize each other? Does producer Dub get an earful? All of this, plus Paula's world, where she goes to the Harvest Festival with her little one, and your ugly and awkward moments, school kid level. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie. Oh my God. What is that? Oh, it's just a Wookiee. Paula. That's someone who's been told that they're beautiful no matter what. Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. It is episode 318. Ugg, ugg. Ooh, you got you're a bit chipper today. <laughs> yeah, I guess I could do my uh, alto. <laughs> We're sisters who podcast, by the way. Oh, we are. We are. Totally. <laughs> Technically, we are sisters who podcast. Welcome to the Ugly Truth, everyone. Okay, so I used to listen to our show for quality control and to learn mistakes I was making or if I had any verbal crutches or if I sounded like I had vocal fry. You know, I didn't want to sound like a Kim Kardashian or saying um or and and yeah, like I didn't want to have those crutches. So I was trying to listen for those things to try to improve the way I sound when I'm recording. And um, I... (laughs) I know. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> hey, I don't claim to not have crutches. I'll crutch all day. And I'm like, uh, so I haven't listened in a really long time because I hate listening to my voice. When producer Dub is editing the show, he doesn't like to use earphones all the time. So sometimes he'll be in his office editing and I can hear us talking. Oh, God. I get hostile. I get mad. And he said, what's the matter? I go, I hate listening to my voice he, oh i'm sorry I'll, I'll put on earphones and then he'll put on earphones but every once i'll hear my rah, rah, rah. And i'm like Ugh. i'm like i can't believe anyone listens to this bullshit <laughs> You're like shut up jamie god, god damn it, it. shut up <laughs> you sound horrible in there just so awful you sound like a chicken and sometimes if i'm really um emotional like if, if i'm super goofy or or if i'm getting really emotional i can hear it and i sound i feel like i sound like a <laughs> i hate it i hate it so much i'm like well this is why women aren't in radio this is why there's like four famous women and a ton of famous men in radio because of this true this is why i ha- have never listened to one of our shows ever nope paula i don't want to hear me you th- that's like having a mirror in front of you while you're having sex you've never done that i unfortunately <laughs> did one time and i it's not like the movies i've i've done it a couple of times and i have never been impressed after one time and uh <laughs> i just no yeah i i have not been impressed with the viewing videotape is worse i Okay, we've had this discussion many times. There is a videotape of me out there somewhere. All I can say is that I've never seen it. I refuse to see it. You didn't take it with you? Look, we've all made mistakes in our youth. (laughs) This was one. This is a big one. So when you're you're being inaugurated to the Supreme Court. (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) not the Supreme (laughs) Whore. Which is what they'll call it. Honorable Justice Minor, Supreme Whore in the court. That's exactly what they'll say. So my point is, is that I hadn't listened to one of our shows in a really long time. And so I listened to the last one, the most recent one that we did. And uh, we're funny. Okay. I, I giggled. I thought it was very funny. <laughs> Daryl edits a lot. <laughs> okay. Producer Deb edits quite a bit for time, not for content. He does not. Okay. He's not our judge. He lets things go. You and I both have made racially insensitive comments in the past. Uh, We don't do that as much as we used to, but he is sensitive. So sometimes I'll remember saying something and I'll say, hey, uh, didn't hear that in the show. He's like, well, I made a call. (laughs) I'm like, all right, fine. I get it. But we're getting nowhere if we're vanilla for the rest of our damn lives. He's like, I know, but it was just too racially insensitive. I'm like, all right, fine. My point is, is that we're funny 
And I was surprised at how much he edits out. <laughs> I was That's really surprised. Funny. I was... I, sometimes I feel like he's... He, I think he takes advantage of the fact that we don't listen regularly. Maybe. So now I feel like I need to maybe listen more often. Like and monitor him? The last time that I was listening regularly, we used to get in fights. Oh. I would say... Why did you edit that out? He's like, well, I just did it for time. I mean, yes, it was funny. But I'm like, no, 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 no. You edited that out because you thought it was in poor taste. That is none of your goddamn business. <laughs> I can say whatever I want to say. You're right. Oh, you're right. Boy. You're absolutely correct. This is your thing. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't patronize me because you're going to say that. He And then so then he'll do this. Fine. You don't want me to edit. You want me to leave it raw. You're going to hate how you sound. <laughs> <laughs> God. yeah it's ugly every time and i'm like does this happen is this what we call creative differences is this what's going on right now so anyway i'm gonna i'm going to listen a little longer which is why you and i have to keep it short so that he okay. can't he can't edit it that's my whole point. he'll have no choice because he'll need the content <laughs> he'll have to leave in everything so over the weekend malia had some plans and stuff and daryl and i mm, I'd say a couple times a year we drink with a purpose. I am not a fan of going out of my way to get drunk or anything like that. But sometimes if the weather feels good and we've done a bunch of work around the house, we'll sit in the back on the deck and drink until we get drunk. Okay. Which we did on Saturday. Started with some champagne, had a bunch of food that was, you know, some snacks and stuff. And uh, next thing I know, I'm drinking whiskey. I'm drinking old fashions. Oh, God. Yeah. And I look and I said, hey, it's 1130. And we're, we're on our second old fashions in the living room <laughs> watching TV. He is hammered. Now, oh. I am not as drunk as he is because I actually did not keep up with him. I ended up throwing a full glass of champagne away. And I never finished my second old fashioned. So I really... Ha- I mean, I definitely was not sober, but I was not as as drunk as he was. So finally, he stands up out of nowhere and he's all, I don't feel good. I would think so. And I said, oh, do you need to go to bed? He goes, yeah. And you know, when a, when a boy is really hammered, they turn into children, like young, little, small children. They're like, I don't feel good anymore. And they just want to go to bed. I'm surprised he didn't vomit. Yeah. And I said, well, you should go to bed. And he's like, all right. So I locked everything up. But what was funny is you could you can tell we were both really drunk. We were watching Barefoot in the Park on the classic movie channel. What? With, with uh, Jane Fonda and Robert oh. Redford. <laughs> It's not porn. It was this super old. It's a. It's moved from like 1968 or 71. Right. Was such, it black and white or was it color? It's color. It's a Neil okay. Simon play, and it was turned into a movie with Jane Fonda and Robert Redford. It is one of my most favorite movies of all time. It is so good, and they're both because they're both so great. And Robert Redford is so freaking cute when he was a youngin. No matter what movie he made back then, he was just adorable. <sighs> he was just so good looking. He reminds me of Brad Pitt, but Brad Pitt's not even as cute as he was. Robert no. Redford was really good looking. And so anyway, I, I, I'm sitting there and I'm hazed over and I start saying, Shama Shama, Mr. Velasco. And Daryl's like, what are you saying? And I go, it's the song. It's the song. She's going to have him sing it. Shama Shama. And he's like, I don't know what you're saying anymore. I'm getting scared. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. <laughs> So finally we go to bed and it's like two in the morning and I now that we have a television in our bedroom, you know, because because Daryl, the TV's on and I'm trying to keep my because, you know, when you if you drink too much and you get the spins. Oh, yeah. So I had my eyes open because I'm like, I'm afraid of I'll have the spins if I if I close my eyes. So I'm just going to watch TV and hopefully I'll just pass out. So I'm watching Star Wars, the 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 new Jedi or something, the newest Mm, one, the one where Han Solo dies. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I'm watching it, and it had just started. I've passed out, and all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, the TV got really loud, and I hear this, Wah! like that. What I'm the like, hell? I'm like, and I would <gasps> look up, and it's it's Chewbacca screaming because Han Solo got stabbed with a lightsaber. Oh, and, so you were out for a good like 45 minutes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I woke up, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> what is that? Oh, it's just a Wookie. Okay. Phew. <laughs> I turned off the TV. I'm like, this is ridiculous. What is? What was in those drinks? I feel like we're hallucinating or something. It was insane. 
insane. So I wake up and we are so hungover. I would imagine. I mean, the sugar and the the champagne with the whiskey. God, that makes me want to throw up just thinking about it. I know, but it was so fun. It was so fun. We ended up, uh, before we started watching bad, well, it wasn't bad TV, but weird TV. Before that... (laughs) Stuff you'd never really watch. We were doing what you would have loved. We were sitting around and and looking up all these old songs. You know, we were looking up. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, I don't know, some B.B. King, some Smokey Mm -hmm. Robinson, some uh, Sam Cooke. And it was just going on and on. And it was just we were just segueing from one thing to another. And it was such a great night. It, you know, Daryl and I do have those, but this was one of those really good ones right. that you have. It was really great. So it was worth the hangover for sure. But man, was I dragging my ass. Oh, God. Oh, I my hate God. hangovers. I do, too. And I turned to him the next day. I'm like, it was worth it, though, right? He's like, yeah, it was worth it. Just <laughs> like, think okay. in Vegas, they have that service where they'll come and give you an IV with like a bunch of electrolytes and like Gatorade. I'll do it. I will absolutely. It's one hundred and fifty dollars. So what? If we're doing two nights of partying, which I hope we we do at some on some level, uh, I'm <laughs> yeah, absolutely having them come to our suite. Absolutely, we got a suite. We're doing it if we need it. I know. I showed Olivia the picture of the hotel <laughs> and yes. the room we're staying at, and she started yes. crying. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> she wants to go. <laughs> oh, no. This is grown-up town. This is not for little ones. And I asked her, I said, Olivia, you have to wear a dress to the club. I'm like, what are you going to wear? She's like, my flower dress. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll tell you what. I'm like, when you turn 21, maybe we'll take you to Vegas. And she's like, all right. Oh, my God. You're going to go with a bunch of old ladies? Okay. <laughs> she she won't care. She's a cool little girl. Anyway, yeah. So I was thinking about that. I was like, God, if I can't even handle four cocktails, how am I going to do Vegas? But I'm getting excited. Now, are you drinking at all? Um, Have you decided? I'm- I might have a cocktail or two. I'll start okay. with one and see what happens. Okay. Well, I wasn't sure because I we hadn't really discussed it. Because I know some friends that will be there are heavy drinkers. <laughs> like, you can't keep up with those people. No. I can't keep up. No one can. No one can. They're alcoholics. There's no way anyone can keep up with that. It's, it's impossible. No. So. No one does. Well, listen, I was doing some research because... I am not a gambler, and I have been to Vegas only one or two times before, and it's been it's been a few years since I've been. The last time I went was for the iHeart Radio Music Awards and or the music festival, and so it was there was a lot of work, there was a lot of music, but the after party is where we really totally partied, and we mm-hmm. partied till like four a.m. We I think we finally crashed at like five thirty. Yeah, it was super fun. I know we're capable of that, by the way. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind that we can no, do that. No, it's, it's true. I mean, the last time we went to Vegas with Stephanie and Allison, mm-hmm. we didn't roll into our hotel until like almost six in the morning. Yeah, it's like you walk outside, you're like, what? What is that? Daylight? It's, it's daylight. The sun. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So I was doing some research. I'm like, what can you do if you don't want to gamble? Because I, I might, I'll probably do a little, but not really. I'm not really... I just don't like doing. I'd rather waste my money on other stuff. So, uh, so we're going to be going to Fremont Street now. I've done some some checking on Fremont Street. It's the old Vegas. Yeah, a lot of touristy stuff, lots of bars. But the the thing, it's kind of like New Orleans, where you can go to these different bars and get those ridiculously oversized cocktails. Oh, like the mar- margaritas or yeah, like the, and they're called they're called yard longs. But the but you can get there's. Like, it's a thing to collect them. Like, there's one that's, like, a guitar shape or one that looks like a lady with a bikini on or, you know, the long dumbbell-looking ones or whatever. So there's one um, at the Hard Rock in Las Vegas. It is the shape of a champagne magnum, and it's all gold or all silver, and they fill it up with some kind of slushy alcoholic beverage. (laughs) Oh, wow. And I'm like, I want that. I want to get one of those. (laughs) And then walk around and st- and I guess people watching is just am- amazingly fun. Yeah, I mean, you can totally just like start at the main area. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, is it the Sahara or something like that? And then mm-hmm. just walk. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a long walk. But I mean, there's little shops there. There's like, you know, Walgreens and, you well, know. Well, that little- Walgreens, by the way, is pretty famous, apparently. 
Apparently, I bought, they st- I bought flip-flops there. <laughs> Wait, no, on Fremont Street? Oh, no, 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 on, on the main strip. Yeah, no, no. I definitely want to walk the strip, for sure. But I also, when we go to Fremont Street, we're going to go Friday night. We're going to walk that. Because that's okay. supposed to be insane. And so I'm excited about that. The, the Neon Museum I really want to do, but I don't know if we'll have time to do it. But I would really love to see it. Where all the old neon signs yeah, from Vegas yeah. are. Yeah. You can do a tour at night. I think that would be super fun. That is cool. But we'll see. We'll see. But anyway, Alex is, she does all the work for my hairdresser. So she like washes my hair and all that stuff. Anyway, so she's a big, she knows Vegas very well. She goes, oh my God. She goes, you have to watch, it's so fun. It's not touristy. It's just what you do. You know, Mm -hmm. you do, that's what you, you have to, you have to. She goes, have one really nice meal and then just do everything. And I'm actually getting excited now. (laughs) So I'm hoping that you and I get to at least two clubs. I want to go to Hakkasan, which is the number one club in Vegas, probably in the country. It's one of the best clubs. Where's that at? That is at the uh, the MGM, and it's where they have all the celebrity DJs and stuff. Oh, cool. I don't think it opens till late night, so I'm hoping maybe Saturday we can go, but we'll see. And then yeah. the club it, at the Aria, where we're staying, is really hopping. I've been to that one, and that's amazing. Nick Cannon, he was the guest DJ when I went there the last time, which was oh fun. Oh, my God. I love Nick Cannon. I know. I tried to get a picture of him for you, but it was too dark in there. I couldn't do it. Plus, there's there's kind of a rule about taking pictures in Vegas. Oh, you just don't do you that? You just don't do it. So oh, okay. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, you know. Okay. So did you go to the Harvest Festival with your children last week? Did you do it? Brian was home, actually sick. He was on antibiotics and just coughing and hacking and blowing his nose everywhere and so i asked him if he wanted to go he said no and i said that's probably better because it's starting to get cold in the evening it's true and so he stayed home and we went to the harvest festival at the school olivia wore her costume she was very excited good so we go in there and i said how much is 20 tickets and they're like it's ten dollars i'm like okay "Okay, i'll do that and so i gave olivia the tickets and i'm like well here it is the harvest festival what do you want to do And so she starts walking around looking for friends and, you know, she can't find any because, you know, everybody's going to be there every year, (laughs) but nobody's there. Were you there early or late? No, we got there kind of late, you know, I mean, by late, I say like 630 and it was over at eight. Oh, that's perfect timing. So it's not like, you know, we were closing the place down or something no. like that. but a lot of people got there right at five when it started and i'm just like well i'm sorry i don't i don't do anything right at five okay first of all there is such a thing as being fashionably late you know the only time you don't do that is when you have an appointment with a professional like a doctor or a dentist but you know parties showing up right on time is kind of inappropriate well, and I just can't believe that, you know, a majority of the school would be there at five. I Plus, just, can you imagine the lines? There were a ton of lines. And anyway, so the main attraction was this haunted house. And okay. everybody was in line for that. So <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I'm like, we'll get in line later. I, oh, I said, we'll get in, in line when it dies down a little bit. But it never did. It never died down. So I'm like, well, we better get in line for this thing before, it, you know, it's over. They close. Yeah. So we go to get in line. There's a big orange cone at the end. And they're like, sorry, it's closed. What? <laughs> so Lou's like, I just wanted to go to the haunted house. Oh, no, <laughs> you're a bad parent. So we played the little dumb games where, you know, it's like throw the beanbags through the football hole. Did she win and- five cent prizes? She won a pencil and... Well, there you go. I, something else. I don't even know what it was. So did she ever find friends? She saw friends, but they were leaving because they got there at five. <laughs> were, were you given the riot act for this? Like, was she upset with you? No, she showed me around in the library. <laughs> um, oh, jeez. She showed me all the little trinkets. She had gone, I don't know if I told you this, she had gone to school with $25 of her own money, and she spent 13 at the book fair. Okay, did she buy a book? No. <laughs> oh, boy. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty normal. We did. We finally left because you know it was just we we had done everything there was and we we couldn't do the the 
little haunted house and that was the main thing i guess that's where they put all their efforts and so i see i the rest of the place was kind of boring got it did she get it did they have face painting or anything they didn't know they had they had like a cakewalk which she did do did she win a cake she won a cupcake because it has the word cake in it oh lord (laughs) so when we got home ryan counted the tickets and he's just like you guys only he's like you only spent four tickets and i'm just like what i'm like that's all that's what's left you mean to tell me i could have bought four 50 cent tickets (laughs) we could have spent two dollars and had the same amount of fun (laughs) so i will say the thing about these events is they are way less than they promote them to be. Yeah. They're never they're never what they claim they'll be. I will say when I went through my hazy phase of PTA when I had three children in an elementary school, it actually saved me money to be on the PTA to be honest with you because the kids got to go to all the events for free and oh. there's so much stuff that they give them, you know, at least back then. I don't know if it's like that anymore, but it was, you know, it, it, it gave him something to do. You know, there was always an event to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Or just a couple celeb news. You know who Selma Blair is, yeah? I do. She has MS. Yes, I read that. I was really sad to read that. I really like her. She's funny. Yeah. You know what? There's quite a few celebrities that have autoimmune diseases. It kind of surprised me. I just read that and I was like, I was really genuinely saddened to read that she wasn't healthy. I I really think she's funny. Maybe I like that's her. why she's been hanging low for a while. Maybe, but that, I loved her in Legally Blonde. <laughs> she's great. She was so funny. Well, her and Reese Witherspoon are best friends in real life. So. They are? Yeah. Oh, that makes me happy. I love that. I like Reese. I like Reese Witherspoon. I don't know. Do you like her? Uh, in doses. Yeah. I knew you were going to say that. I knew she wasn't your cup of tea. She just confuses me is all. Well, I think, uh, you know, on one hand, she she's this sweet Southern girl. But then on the other hand, you've seen the videos of her with her husband when they're completely drunk, getting pulled over for drunk driving. She's like, do you know who I am? Well, right. you're going to find out. You know, it's like, well, who are you? <laughs> it's like, ma'am, we don't give a shit who you are. You're drunk. That's all we know. Well, and like once you hit 40, you can't be like America's sweetheart anymore. <laughs> You're no, too damn she's, old. No, she is. Uh, she's a, but she's a very strong. You know, she's about women now. She's about oh, is that women. It? Oh yes, she's all about empowering women, and her production company is the one that did uh, Pretty Little Lies or Big Little Lies mm-hmm. on HBO. That show with Nicole Kidman and I don't know who other that horrible girl that doesn't wear a deodorant. Oh, Shosh- not Shoshana. What's her name? I don't know doesn't wear deodorant no julia roberts no (laughs) no but someone someone said some crappy things about her on social media and she was not having it who julia roberts yes emma roberts and julia roberts they're i think they're uh i think emma is her niece niece and aunt aunt. and they were playing a card game in the morning on some vacation oh god did you see that picture Yes, I did see the photo. And she said what made her sad is that the photo she saw was of a lovely time, a really warm, lovely memory of her playing cards with her niece. And so it got posted on social media because I believe Emma felt the same way. And then everybody said, oh, my God, look how old she is. (laughs) Like, good Lord, she looks like a frog. Yeah. They called her a thumb or something. Yeah. And she's like, well, that really hurt me. And I'm like, did it, Julia? Did it? I <laughs> mean, you didn't look like your Dior ad. I mean, what? That's someone who's been told for way too long that they're beautiful no matter <laughs> what they look like. Yes, exactly. Like they don't have the ability to like screen out bad photos. <laughs> yeah. They don't see what we see. So anyway, so she's, of course, now lo- no longer participating in social media because of it. So She can't handle it. Hey, that's fine. You know, just do the George Clooney. You know, just show up and make a couple of statements at some, you know, benefits and be done with it. No one wants to see it anyway. It's, it's good if that's what you're going to look like. Look like someone's grandmother. It's all right. She looked like, like one of those, like, white, like, clear colored newts. I thought she looked like, okay, and then we're we're done talking about Julia Roberts, but I thought she 
actually look like one of the Richard Scary worms. <laughs> what? Richard Scary, you know, the Richard Scary's world, the, the little books, they have those little worms. That she looked like. One oh, of those. yeah. Okay. She like one of those, but not green, just white. Right. Anyway, it was really funny. Okay. And uh, Amy Schumer's pregnant. Yeah, and I don't give a shit, but it's everywhere. I know, but, well, the reason I think this is what I thought, and it's because I'm a total bitch. I'm like, okay, she thinks that people give her shit about her weight now. Just wait. This girl is not going to look like Halle Berry pregnant. Mm -hmm. She's going to look like a German ancestor who works in the fields pregnant. Like, she's going to get big. There ain't no doubt about it. She's going to have to work really hard. She's a normal person, so now we're going to see what that looks like. I mean, <laughs> even normal people, people, it's hard. It's it's very hard. And I don't care what husbands say. Not all women look beautiful pregnant. Oh, God, they, no. No, I'm sure there are those that do, but it's not me. Although Josie, yeah, you were pretty I, when you were pregnant. No. I just look at them like they're nuts. I'm like, what kind of sick bastard are you? <laughs> He's like, well, because Daryl wanted to take pictures, not naked pictures. He just wanted. But to... those maternity photos. Well, if I looked like Halle Berry, sure. If I was just to stick with a bump on it. Absolutely. Can I wear a dress and then like look over my shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all it would be. I don't know. Kids are beautiful, aren't they? <laughs> the babies are cute. Totally. I just, I, I never understood the, the pregnant or not the pregnancy, the, uh, yeah, yeah. the pregnancy sh- pictures, the, the photo shoot where you're pregnant. Um, you know, I would never do it. That's all I know. I've seen some ones that are quite beautiful, but yeah. like the family ones, those are pretty cool. Yeah. But the ones where like the guy is holding her boobs or something like that, I think those are really tacky. What do you do with that? Where do you put that? You hang spend twelve hundred dollars on those, and where do you hang them up at? You know. And then what happens if you guys break up or something? Then what? Then what do you do with it? No. Yeah, that's just weird. I don't know. Hanging up in the baby's room. I mean, just... <laughs> yeah. Mom, what's this? <laughs> no. Oh, that's just something that happens when you have hormones surging through your body, and you think you're Mother Earth. Give me that. Anyways. Anyway. Okay. So I have some ugly and awkward moments in relation to children and school. So let's do our ugly and awkward moments sponsored by lipandclip.com. And by the way, they had a holiday preview of all their, their cute little gifts. I know we talked about that briefly last week. We have access to all the stuff that's coming out for Christmas shopping. And they're going to do a vintage line. I don't know if you saw that, Paula, but they're actually going to re- be reproducing the packaging from the original Avon line. It's oh. super vintage looking like 30s. Really, really pretty. I love that stuff. I know you do. So anyway, um, hopefully they'll, they'll, I'm sure they'll be kicking that off after Halloween is over. So keep an eye out for that because I think it's going to be really pretty. So lipandclip.com. Okay. I have three little stories about kids at school. These are all from um, either class or teachers or moms that were witnessed, witnessed their kids doing stuff. So here's the first one. A lovely mom from gymnastics said her daughter, Kelly, would love a play date with my daughter, Serena. My daughter, who was standing right there, yelled, no, I hate Kelly. Oh, my God. And I thought, well, there you go. (laughs) That's what happens. They're honest. I think that makes me laugh. Malia had had a girl who was just mercilessly mean and gossipy and just a total bitch. And they finally had a showdown with the principal. And they finally said, do you want to be friends with her or something? And she goes, well, I would really like that. And (laughs) they're like, well, you're really going about it the wrong way. (laughs) This is not, and we can't force her to be your friend. Emily is like, never in a million, (laughs) never. Wow. Yeah, it was bad. Okay, here's the second one. When my daughter's preschool teacher asked her if she had a fun weekend, she replied, we went on a beer run. <laughs> Tyler did that to me once. It's funny the things that kids repeat or say or remember. It's like God, of all the that. things we did this weekend, you know, like going to your soccer game and the birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese, all you remember is going on the beer run. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Great. 
Yeah. I, you know, isn't it weird when your kids mention alcohol to your teachers? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, we don't really drink, so they don't mention anything. But I'm sure, well, Olivia told me the other day that she's like, I'm really trying hard to stop picking my nose and eating it because <gasps> she, she told me this. What? Because she says, if I stop, then dad said he would try and quit smoking. <laughs> Olivia picks her nose and eats it. Oh, she's horrible about it. What? Oh my god! I had no idea that this was a thing. And so, why have we never discussed this? Well, what's to say? I mean, uh, well, uh, my daughter's gross. She picks her nose and eats it. She eats whatever comes out of her face. It's just I don't know, but <laughs> so she confided in me. <laughs> Well, whatever it takes, I suppose. Is there, And there's really no way to prevent that. Like, there's no bitter thing you can put on her finger that'll burn her nostril. Like, that's abuse. So you can't do that. It'll just... I think it'll work itself out in time. Well, she's working it out now. Or sh she'll at least learn to do it in private. <laughs> I don't oh know. Oh, my God. You know, I have... Have you ever caught your man picking his nose? Oh, in some fashion, Yeah. I have caught Daryl picking his nose before, and I really, like, I hate it so much. I, I mean, can't I've, even. I've never seen a finger up there, but it's usually, like, the pretend itch or something. I have. I've walked into a room too quickly, and, and I'm kind of like a ninja or like a cat. He can't hear me or see me ever. So I'll walk in, and I'll see him, you know, two knuckles deep, and I'm like, <sighs> <laughs> I and then can't he'll pull, believe it. He'll pull it out and act like nothing. And I'm like, why? 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 And then for the rest of the day, I'm like, don't touch me. Oh, God. Sometimes he'll come in for a kiss. I'm like, have you washed your hands? Rinse your mouth out. <laughs> yeah, really? It might taste I can't. like boogers. I just can't. All I can think, all I can see is green. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Actually, what's going to happen is the wrong person will witness Olivia picking her nose and eating it. And she'll forever be the booger eater or she will stop. Like, she'll know. just stop. I, yeah, I don't know what to say. I, Paula, I'm, I'm vomitous. I can't even right now with this. I'm not going to say anything to her because I don't want her to feel self-conscious. But yes, she's definitely in an age where she is self-conscious. Like she is, keeps wearing her old pants and we've bought her new pants. But it, are they floods? Her, it's, get to, it's to the point where it's just like her old, like she likes stretchy uh, pants. Yeah. And so that's all she's wearing. But they have like holes in them. They've got like pen marks up the leg. Why? Kids are so weird. And so I keep, I, I had bought her like three new pairs of jeans, but she yeah. refuses to wear them. You have to throw those away. Finally, today, I she came out with her little skinny jeans on, but mm. they were like size six X, and <laughs> so they were like three inches above her shoes. Like, and, what are you doing? <laughs> and so Victor's caught it, and he's just like, Olivia. He's like, those pants are way too small for you. Go change. And so I'm like, Olivia. I'm like, you have three brand new pairs of jeans in your second drawer. Go put one of them on. So she came out with the jeans and like the way her legs were walking. I mean, she looked like she had like, I don't know, skeleton legs or something. What is going on with this child? So when we got in the car to go to school, she just stared blankly out the window. <laughs> she was absolutely broken. She was shook. <laughs> she almost had tears in her eyes. That she had to wear new clothes. She just, she's like, I just don't like the way the one these ones look and so why are they ugly no they're s little s dark blue skinny jeans and somebody so, did, did someone make fun of her maybe or? she's never worn them oh okay what a weirdo she well you know is. what i would have said these are the same things they're just your size so when i picked her up she had them rolled up like so they look like little capris <laughs> oh so she likes capri pants but I'm like, that's fine for now. If that's what you want to do, fine. Is but that the style? Did you see other little children with their legs rolled up? No, I did not. But when it's winter time, <laughs> you know, and it's like 45 degrees out, you yes. cannot do that. <laughs> no. That is, she's so unusual. And not in a bad way. She does beat, walk to the beat of her own drum, though. She's so weird. 
I know. What a weird kid. All right. Oh, here's the last one. This uh, teacher, the reason I'm bringing this in is because this is an ugly and awkward moment uh, that we would, well, I would have. I have issues with not filtering the first thought that comes into my brain. So I'll say things that are incredibly inappropriate on accident. I assume that you have that issue as well sometimes. (laughs) I can remember a time specifically, mind you, I was drunk and we were talking to these two guys and uh, me and Stephanie were talking Mm -hmm. to these two guys. They were older. Their wives (laughs) were sitting at the bar. Oh, my Lord. And it it was just all friendly, not, you know, trying to pick up anybody or whatever. Sure, sure. So they're like, well, we're going to take off. And I'm just like, okay. And I told one of the wives, I said, I just have to tell you, I said... I hope when I'm your age, I'm as beautiful as you are. <laughs> Why? Why did you do that? I was trying to compliment her. And it, what did she do? Uh, she okay. just glared at me. And took yeah, me. I was going to say, how old do you think I am, bitch? <laughs> She's like, I'm 24. I think she said something like, thanks for flirting with my husband all night. Or something like that. Oh, God, thanks for putting it in the file for him. Now, every time he fucks me from behind, it's going to be your face. Thank oh you. God. God. When I thought about it later, I'm like, you know, that really wasn't a compliment. It really wasn't. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so this teacher, <laughs> he said, I was doing a game in my class and the prize was a starburst for the winning team. A sassy black girl in the class said, uh, just a starburst. My response to her was meant to be something along the lines of, well, I can't give you a full meal. But instead, what came out was, what do you want me to give you, fried chicken? (laughs) I didn't even put it together until she said, um, why? Because I'm black? The class and the girl included all laughed But I just responded with something like, no, I meant real food. Oh, my God. (laughs) Luckily, they probably he's probably like a super favorite teacher and they probably knew he wasn't trying to be, you know, a racist asshole. But that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. I do that stuff all All the the time. time. All the time. I wonder if it's like a subconscious thing. I don't know. I really don't. I tried to give my hairdresser a compliment today and it came out so bad. I, They did a really great job of my hair today. And I said, thank you so much. They're like, your hair looks great. Are you doing anything tonight? And I'm like, no, I'm just going to go home. And they're like, oh, you've got to take that hair out of the town, you know, because it, it just turned out really good. And I said, I know. It's almost like I have good people who do it or something. And it came out. <laughs> It came out so convoluted. I, I don't even know what I was trying to say. And I'm like, all right, well, never anyway, okay. It okay. Kind of, it kind of sounded like sarcasm. Paula, it was not. It was <laughs> awful. It was just awful. And I'm like, all right, I've 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 said enough. I, I leave you. <laughs> I'm just like, I've got to get out of here. Oh, my God. I know. I'm like, this is what I get for not interacting with the public regularly. <laughs> just don't, I can't True. speak. Anyway, so, yes, I relate to this poor teacher. Yeah. And then, you know, when I was looking, doing research on all of these teachers and their awkward moments, there is a serious issue with young ladies being attracted to their male teachers. Like, it's a real issue. I think Sting had something going uh, in his song. Yeah. Like, this one story, they said, I was a student teacher. I was a young college, you know, student teacher for this uh, this history teacher or whatever. And at the end of the semester, uh, a young girl gave me a package like a gift and so i unwrapped the gift and it was the consent laws for the state oh my god a little forward (laughs) well you know i mean to become a teacher i think it only takes like five years i don't know man so i mean you figure if they do it if they start right when they're 18 then they're like 24 25 that's young and yeah. if a girl's 18 getting ready to graduate, uh huh. I mean, it can happen. Except you only hear of these, like, female teachers having sex with 12-year-olds. I don't get why it. Why does that... It, it's always in Florida, too. Like, why? why? Why do they all go there and do that? They need to check the water down there, because there's, there's <sighs> crazy, real. crazy crimes that get committed <laughs> down there. I was, I was listening to another podcast, and they were talking about how that incredibly horrific demon of a human, Ray Carruth, got out of prison. Oh, okay. You know who he is, right? No. 
Okay, Ray Cruz is the guy that hired someone to shoot his baby mama 20 years ago. And he blocked her. He blocked her in, and the, he had his friend. He paid his friend six grand to assassinate his pregnant girlfriend. She was eight months pregnant. Oh my and god! He was a first round draft pick. He played pro ball. That's why it was. A, it was a huge deal. Anyway, he got eighteen years, and he got out yesterday. And someone goes, "Well, he's got to go to Florida, right? I mean, isn't that where people like that go? Yes, for <laughs> like, real. Where else could he possibly go? There's nowhere Does, else. So did she die? She died. The son, uh, the boy, the baby lived. Her mother is raising him. He is developmentally disabled. Oh, uh, because he where he was shot because he shot the belly, and her and her and she had enough time. She lived long enough to call nine one one and say who did it. That which is why he went to prison. And the guy who shot her, had he's days, in he, he's in prison for forty years. Gosh, I can't believe they both didn't get the needle. Well, I even don't know. so, nobody kills anybody anymore. I mean, no. like, you know. Oh, death penalty, you mean? Yeah. Well, they do in Texas <sighs> yeah, and really. Florida. Don't don't commit a crime in Texas. No, they don't mess around there. You get a so. parking ticket and they'll, you know. <laughs> it's the chair for you. They'll give you the chair. Yes, exactly. All right. Well, anyway, those are the ugly and awkward moments. Lovely, lovely children who hate kids and love beer runs. Well, yes. I think we are done for today. Thank you for shopping Amazon through our link. Uh, definitely helps the show and we appreciate your patronage. Please visit our lip and clip uh, As Jamie mentioned, there's going to be some new and exciting things coming. So uh, look for that after Halloween. That's the end of the show and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.